for California, Parker Dam stores a much needed supply of good domestic water. Those mountains out there are uh, the Needles Mountains, the town of Needles, and the northern boundary of the Chemehuevi Reservation where I'm at today. This area was open river, no sandbars, and in a very short period of time, although it looks very beautiful and green, sandbars have grown to the point that Catfish Bay itself is often filled with toxic algae and a bloom that forms because the inlet has been covered by this sandbar in front of us. And the whole area has grown both from, you would think, well, is it drought? Is it low water conditions? You would imagine that. But it's a combination of a lack of inflow of water because of overuse. The silt that comes down when they release water from the dams, and there's six dams up river, These deep building basins are necessary because the river water has picked up a heavy load of sand and silt. The water is kept in the deep silting tanks until the sand and silt has settled to the bottom. A large pumping station starts many millions of gallons of water a day on the journey across the desert to Los Angeles. And just below us is the main diversion that takes water from Parker Dam. There's two intakes, one that goes out to Los Angeles and the other comes out to Arizona. Both of these canals take water a couple hundred miles. Along much of the way, the water is pumped in giant pipes which run up and downhill through the mountains. Going into Arizona, the Central Arizona Project has to lift water up to such an elevation that it's among some of the most expensive water in the world comes right from here. We're on a ferry that takes you across the lake from, from Havasu Landing, which is a Chemehuevi owned casino on the Chemehuevi Reservation and over here to the uh, Arizona side. Uh, as I said, the more developed, very popular Lake Havasu. The disparity, the difference between the two in terms of development uh, speaks to a number of things. Uh, historical factors involving uh, the Chemehuevi's ability to use their own land and, de and to develop that land. Remember, this is not an infinite resource. It has a beginning and an end. And already the end of it has been dried up for half a century when you go to Mexico. The Delta, which is not far from here, is essentially uninhabitable because of the damming and, and the diversion of water from the Colorado River. And that's something that we have to contend with not just as people in the United States, but Mexico and throughout the entire region. Uh, the collapse of fisheries, the issues of agriculture, overusing the land, these are not new issues. And they're just going to be exacerbated by the competition for water. So, and this is pretty much ground zero for future water disputes throughout the western United States as municipalities and large cities are jockeying for what's left of the Colorado River. Right out there, folks, you see where the supply of water for coastal Southern California comes from right here. In the nearly flat desert areas, the water flows in open canals. The water you see here today will be transported and consumed by people in Los Angeles and Phoenix by next week. Finally, it reaches the reservoirs of the Los Angeles water system. The Chemehuevi, they missed out on a lot of, a lot of that development because of uh, political considerations and a lot of racism and disrespect for the people whose land their ancestors sacrificed so that Southern California could drink water and water their lawns. And all of this is a product of all of those years of, well, basically abuse of this river. This seems a painful irony and a reminder that those of us who turn on a tap 250 miles away from here have very little connection to where that water actually comes from and who the people are that it's affected by. And as we look towards a much drier future in Southern California, we have to be very much aware of where that water comes from. And when we turn that tap on, who's at the other end of that pipe?